Hello everybody and welcome to the 8th episode of OpenGL Engine slash Game Development Log. In this video I will show you the changes that I made to the engine this past week. Similar to the last week I was working on some game ideas and prototypes, but the main part of this week's update were screen space reflections. Besides that there were some improvements to the rendering pipeline and also some minor changes. The first thing you might have noticed are the separated uh, CPU and GPU keyframe timers visible in the left lower corner. The two show how much time in milliseconds took to update or draw the current keyframe. And as you can see the GPU value is much greater because there's not really much happening on the CPU at this moment. But that is bound to change with more collision bodies and also a larger map, including of course some graphical optimizations. The next thing that I added is a bit more precise eye light adaptation which will make the scene brighter if it's too dark and vice versa. Also in this example the adaptation is a bit too fast than it would be in real time. With those minor changes out of the way let's get into the main topic of this video, reflections. At this moment I'm using a basic screen space ray tracing method to get the color of the reflected object. A plus side of the effect being in screen space is that the update time is independent of the geometric complexity. Then of course a major downside is that we only have the information that is available on the screen to work with, meaning that the object that is not on the screen currently cannot be reflected. To make this less noticeable we can fade the effect out at the corners of the screen. To minimize the transition visibility we can also fall back on other reflection methods such as for example parallax corrected cube maps which use environmental probes to calculate the local reflection meaning they only reflect static objects. Another method are planar reflections which are mostly used for large surfaces such as water or surfaces that reflect geometry that is behind the player such as a mirror for example. But methods such as this one are quite expensive because we have to draw all of the geometry that could potentially be reflected. If none of these methods are able to find the reflection then we have to fall back on the global reflection cube map which is basically the skybox. At this moment the engine uses a simple screen space reflection method with a fallback to the global skybox reflection. But I plan to add one or two more fallback methods in the future as well. Another thing you might have also noticed is that the reflections are actually from the previous keyframe. So when the camera is moved fast back and forth this can be easily noticeable. Fixing this issue would actually require a rework of quite a big chunk of the rendering pipeline. So I've decided to leave this for the next week. I also expect for this update to improve the frame rate quite a bit. This week I also rewrote the grass shader from scratch because it was also part of a game idea I was working on. The grass from the previous clip would actually look much nicer if there was some ambient occlusion present on the screen, which I might also rework next week because the current implementation uses too many resources and I'm not able to record the engine in full screen. In these next few clips I'm just showing how reflections of colored light emissive cubes look like and in my opinion in darker settings the reflections of the colored cubes really bring out the best out of the effect. Another slight problem at this moment is that the reflections take quite a significant portion of the render time so I will have to further optimize them quite a bit. So this brings us to the end of this week's episode. If you like the video like it and if you would like to see more videos in the development log series please subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!